Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. Today we're going to be going over introductory vocabulary for geometry. The vocabulary we're going to be reviewing today is going to focus around angles, lines, points, and then there's some others that go along with this. Angles. Well, an angles are formed by two rays or lines that begin at the same point, a vertex, and they share the same endpoint or intersection. So here we have, we have an acute angle right here, and you see there's these two lines, and they meet right here at an endpoint or a uh, vertex. And this measurement is less than 90 and greater than zero. So if it's just zero, it's just a flat line. But if we have it between zero degrees and 90 degrees, it's going to be an acute angle. An obtuse angle is an angle with a measure greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180. So we have this obtuse angle, and here it says angle G is obtuse. So it's but we're looking at this angle right here. And again, the angle, it meets at a vertex there or an end point. And here we go. We have these two lines, and they're not quite flat, and they're not 90 degrees. And that's what's called a right angle. And that's what we're looking at here, a right angle whose measure is 90 degrees. It's not 89 degrees. It's not 91 degrees. It is just 90 degrees. And we can say this vertical line is perpendicular to the horizontal line. And then there's a straight angle. You're like, wait a minute, what's a straight angle? Well, it's just a line where we have a point in the middle here, and we're measuring that point and such. Now, if I put another line going up, straight up as a per perpendicular line, I'd have a 90 and 90, and that's where we get that 180 degrees. Next. Here's some vocabulary for lines. Now, a line can be defined as a straight set of points that extend in opposite directions. It has no ends in both directions. It's infinite. Let's take a look at this line here. So I have an arrow at this end, and it, so it's just going off into infinity to the left. And then here, I'm going down into infinity. And if you notice, I have some notation here. So I have this line. I'm going to call it AB. And Notice how I have like arrowheads on either end of this line that's above it. So it's telling me that that is a line with infinite length. Over here is a ray. A ray is part of a line that has one endpoint, so or a starting point. So here's the starting point here at endpoint W. And it comes along and it goes past through X and keeps on going. And I can say that this is ray WX. And notice that the ray, so I have it right here where there's no arrow end and that there's an arrow at this end. And the arrow points in the direction of the ray. Line segment. A line segment is part of a line which has defined endpoints. So I could have this as part of a whole long line that goes infinite directions. But when I say, hey, here's this line segment U, V, and I have this notation here where it's just a straight line with no arrows on it above it. That's just that line segment. It does not continue in either direction. There's a horizontal line. When a line moves from left to right in a straight direction, it is a horizontal line. So here we go. That, there's that horizontal line. And again, note this, the notation here for that horizontal line because I have two arrows at either or an arrow at either end and right here as well. Then there's a vertical line. When a line runs from top to bottom in a straight direction, it is a vertical line. So here we go. Here's my vertical line. So I have a vertical line QR here, but right next to it, I have a vertical line segment. Notice how I have the endpoints there. So we can mix and match some of these words together to define exactly what we're working with. Here's some more lines. So we have parallel lines here. So again, I have W, X, Y, and Z lines here. They're equidistant apart, so they're, they're going to be going off in, into infinity, and they will never meet. Okay. Then we have perpendicular lines where they do meet. They have an intersection right here, right at 
where they meet and it's at 90 degrees. That's what perpendicular means. It's that when two lines meet or intersect at an angle of 90 degrees or at a right angle, then they are per perpendicular to each other. I can also do that over here. Look at this. I'm just going to say that. Even though that it's squiggly, I can put this mark here. And if this is 90 degrees along these parallel lines, that means, by definition, that that will be 90 degrees there as well. Point is a zero-dimensional mathematical object. Additionally, in math, point is an exact location on a plane, usually marked by a dot. A plane is a two-dimensional flat surface. So if you remember, when we're talking about graphing data, doing line graphs and such, and finding those uh, ordered pairs or coordinate pairs, this is going to go. This is going to explain a little bit more for it. So that we have these different points here, and I have collinear. And let's take a look here. I have this coordinate plane, this two-dimensional coordinate plane. I have a line going here. And this point is 4, 4, this point is 6, 4, and this point is 8, 4. So that's going to be 4 in the x and 4 in the y. And if you notice, they're all along that y uh, length of y equals 4. So therefore, these points are collinear. And then let's say I had these other points here as well. And they are outside of this line, so I can say they are non-collinear with these points here. Well, let's take a look at an endpoint. So again, this could be in a diagram. It could be part of my coordinate plane. So I have this endpoint right here, and it's for a ray, a ray WX. And I can just say WX. I get my array here, my not array, but ray. There we go. So that's that's my notation for that. And then we have the origin. So the origin is right here at my y-axis and x-axis. So we have vertex. So a vertex is right here. There's a vertex. Vertex R. Okay. And if you notice, I have these different lines coming up. You might see it. You know, I can keep on going on with it. Um, adding another line segment here in my in a vertex and such. If I have multiples of these and they all and they come around and they connect, so let's say I have something like this, I have another vertex there, over here, vertex, and there, and I make a polygon. In fact, this right here has one, two, three, four, five. So I have five sides, so that's a pentagon. And all of these are vertices of the pentagon. Let's talk about symmetry. So if you look at somebody's face and you can see that their ears are lined up, their eyes are perfectly spaced, if you just took a slice down the right in the middle of their face and, and they and you pull it apart and you make one a mirror of the other and they and you don't see any differences, then you can say, hey, that person has perfect symmetry. And then that translates over here to what we're talking about with line symmetry. And here are some examples of line symmetry. So I have this shape here, okay? I can slice it in half, and this right here is a mirror image of this down here. And this right here is a mirror image of here. Or, let's say it was part of a larger piece, like a circle, and I had that inside of a circle, and this was a line going down the middle of it. And I just rotated it around, I'm going to get the same shape right here. Let's look at a couple other examples. So we have symmetry for numbers. So this is this line symmetry for an 8. I have two lines of symmetry for this. So there's one going vertically and one horizontally. Because if I slice it this way, this will mirror that. And this side will mirror that side. The letter T has a single line of symmetry that goes right down the middle. Because if, if I just had this part right here on the right-hand side, and I rotated it over here, then it would look exactly the same. And then I have a rhombus. And a rhombus has two lines of symmetry as well. So I'm, go I'm splitting it from one corner to the opposite corner on each side here. So I can just rotate a, that around and get the same mirror image. Now let's take a look at some non-examples of line symmetry, where here's the number five. The number five is not symmetrical. Uh, neither is 7. There's 
so many others. You know, four is not. So these are not. Here's an oddly shaped polygon here. Again, if I put a line through it, and it doesn't matter which way I put that line, it's still not going to be symmetrical. And we have a triangle. Now a triangle can be symmetrical because I could do this. And let's say that all these sides are equal and I put this line right through it exactly down the middle and I rotate it around, I'm going to see the same image. But if I put my line of symmetry through here, it's not going to be symmetrical on one side or the other. I want to thank you for watching and remember to like, share, and subscribe.